Stalker Anomaly has always proven to be a challenging and often hardcore gaming experience. From crazy mutants, invisible death traps, and punishing combat, the game doesn't hold very many punches. But what if we could make our punches as puny as possible? Can you beat Stalker Anomaly with a Makarov? Not too long ago, we ended up smoking this poor game with our rifle of choice, a Mosin, and I get a bunch of comments saying, eh, wavy, the Mosin's the best weapon in the game. Add that to the many people asking for a PM only run, so here we go. Makarovs, huh? Well, can't say it's gonna be easy. So to ease up the potential for threats, we decided to run with Clear Sky for this time through. The game was kind enough to deliver a PMM to us right from the start, which is about 730 grams of Soviet steel loaded with 12 rounds of Pew Pew. The first task was to go around the base and ask literally everybody for potential work. We had to keep in mind that I was not made of bullets right now and my only form of defense is the tiniest caliber in the game. Since the base folks didn't give me much, I thought it might not be a bad idea to visit Sidorovich. On the way, we got our first glimpse of combat, and I can't say it was very pretty. Once we got to the good old rookie village, I asked everybody for work, as per usual, and managed to get a couple newbies to tag along with me. Don't worry, I didn't treat these guys like the fools in the Mosin video. I took them on a few missions in Cordon and politely returned them to Sidrovich. Sid's prices were, as per usual, exorbitant, so to let off some steam, I got killed by an anomaly and fought a bandit sniper. We also wanted to visit Xenotech, but the bandits were guarding the farmhouse. It's too bad a Makarov is much better suited to close combat than a Mosin is. Ain't that right, big guy? Reason we actually came here was to repair a second secondary, a PB, otherwise known as a pew pew. It's silence, okay? You know what? I'll just leave my stupid humor somewhere else. Once done with our fun in Cordon, there was one more mission for Clear Sky we wanted to accomplish. Mutant hunting. Makarov, meet Lurker. Lurker, Makarov. And me, meet Death. Ah, uh, so you see, this, this here is gonna be a problem. Luckily, the swamps allow us to abuse pathfinding, but the Lurkers had a plan. If they knock the pistol out of my hand and banish it to the Shadow Realm, I can't fight back. Joke's on them, though, because now I have two Makarovs. But no, we had to pull the save because the pistol actually disappeared on us. This all happened a few times throughout the playthrough. I don't really know why. Now, we were already pretty far north in the swamps here, so I thought, we may want to go see Doc real quick. Old Bessie, the bloodsucker, was pretty mad I didn't bring her any flesh blood, though, and we had to have a quick conversation about boundaries. And by boundaries, I meant staying the fuck away from me. Doc was convinced the macro was cheap and useless, so I let his brain decide if it was or wasn't. Apparently, he was right, so I left him a scar and ran away. With Doc's info, we left to go visit the Agaprom underground, and because I may have a tiny attention span, I decided not to go through the swamps and instead went through Cordon and Garbage. Cordon's checkpoint left me dealing with some bandit riffraff, who almost killed me. Almost. Garbage was less friendly. There was actually a mission here, probably why I went this way, but some military stalkers were also present. So now we got to see how we stack up against real stalkers. And it went horribly. One even got me with a KS-23 from some ungodly distance. So we got smart, avoided the military, and found the thing we needed to find. From here, we made a pit stop back at home to buy a new suit, then shoved off for the Agaprom Underground. Now, usually we'd circumvent the bandits by using one of the other entrances, but Wavy felt like he had to stick up for tiny pistols out there by showing he's not afraid of a little opposition. And so the bandits got a whole heaping dose of 9x18 served fresh right to their poor, unsuspecting faces. Deeper in the underground, we had to deal with one of those funky zombies. And a psi sucker. And after my bananas got bruised, Wavy decided this ladder right here offered perfect protection from the psi sucker, and we whittled it down bit by bit. The game seemed to be going easy on me too, because I only had to deal with a poltergeist afterwards. So, we grabbed our shit and got the hell out of there. Back at home, we surveyed the work situation and delivered some basic tools to Novikov, who then promptly upgraded my beautiful Makarov. With new upgrades and some new binoculars, we set off for Rostock to go find the barman. We had a little problem getting into Rostock, uh, mainly being chased by like 20 or so dogs. I, I really wasn't kidding. There was a lot of dogs here, okay? 
R was pretty busy, but Barkeep was kind enough to stop watching his Triple X content to help me out. From here, it's as we know. Zakrov, Psy Helmet, Miracle Machine, Radar, in that order. But before jumping into that mess, we needed monies. We had this job to deal with a bandit that got us killed. And he almost got me again, if it weren't for my spidey senses. His friend also caught the smoke. <laughs> you thought. This alone wouldn't cut it. So, back to base once again for another round of who the hell has work that I can actually accomplish. We took a job to deal with more bandits, unloaded an entire clip into this poor guy's knees, got into trouble with the military, but we did manage to deal with them. And we lit up this poor boar. After all was done and done, we visited Zakharov with the money and let him get started on the Psy Helmet. As is customary with the Zakharov ritual, we now have a few days to gear up and acquire as many 9x18 rounds as humanly possible. First stop was Dead City to complete a mission while I suffered from cataracts and to go see Hog and Dushman for work. This got us sent to garbage where I shot a bandit in the face and then used my murder money to reward ourselves with yet another Makarov who would have thunk it when I shot another bandit in the face and used even more murder money to buy a new suit. But our run of terror was about to come back around because the military attacked the rookie village for some odd reason. So as you can imagine, now we got embroiled in a massive shootout with the military and all I had was a couple of Makarovs. It took frustration, pain, anguish, and a few dozen Makarov rounds to repel the military. And as I rounded off the last of the troops, the game congratulated me with a Psy Storm. Just what I wanted. Fresh off the storm, we took ourselves back to Rostock, got chewed on by a pseudo dog, all because a duty soldier shot me, and we assassinated some bandits in the Bloodsucker Village. I only needed one, but uh, I took the whole squad with me. When we made a trip back to the Freedom Base, I ran into someone who reminded me of Yurka, but he was not interested in buying any of my potions this time around. It was at this point in the playthrough I also remembered I had the Monolith Taunt mod enabled. So I had to run and find some Monolith to best in combat while taunting them with their own voices. I also persuaded another Clear Sky Stalker to join me with a little song and dance. But nothing we did would stop us from being indiscriminately killed in all sorts of frustrating and embarrassing fashions. At one point, I had a mission to deal with some bandits. They scurried off to the Dark Valley, so I went in after them. First time through, they got the drop on us. Second time in, I took a different entrance and some other bandits got the drop on us. And third time in, I used yet another different entrance. Promptly, and I mean promptly, saved my friendly from a pseudo dog and then somehow these asshats got themselves back to base. As much as I would have wanted to, I could not go get them right now. Don't you worry, we'll be back very soon. Once I handled this controller with a Makarov, I traveled down to Cordon to accomplish another couple missions, hopefully. Instead of accomplishing anything, I got killed by dogs, sniped by a snipper, leveled by a military stalker, not twice, but thrice, as is the case usually, it takes me a little time to figure things out, but we did get them. And we also took care of a few bandits that seemed to come out of nowhere. My stream at the time also gave me a brilliant idea to steal a bandit suit from one of these turds and use it to complete the mission I left earlier. See, I told you we'd be back. And just to make a point, we used the PB to be extra sneaky breaky. I do have to apologize for the abrupt transition, but the game ended up crashing and corrupting a few minutes of footage. I'm just lucky I stopped the previous recording when I did. But we met up with Zach Ruff, finally got the Psy Helmet, now we're all geared up and ready for our usual Miracle Machine stint. Of course, not before we get toasted by a few snorks. I would have liked to deal with my problems right here, but once I found myself to a little high ground to protect my rear end from snorks, the game decided it was time for an emission. Like running from an angry ex, we bolted from the snorks into the laboratory entrance. I thought I could have been clever by waiting here for the storm to end, but the snorks came to keep me company. I know it's hard to believe, but I was killed by yet another snork. I mean, usually these things grind my gears, but today they were really testing my patience. Good thing I only have to fight one here, and one here, and yep, 
Another one here. Can't forget about the snork up here. And the bloodsuckers, eh, they're the least of my worries. <laughs> I'm joking, what did you expect? Round two with them, we got a little lucky. In the chamber, we made use of some stairs to lure unsuspecting snorks into a hail of Makarov bullets, and I antagonized the snork up here by pretending I'm not paying attention. Somehow the game determined I didn't take damage. This poor thing did, though. And with the miracle machine disabled, we pumped lead into the Bureau and smoked the controller, almost as if they weren't really powerful mutants. With the rabies I contracted from all the snork wounds, I had to fight another handful of snorks to leave the lab. And yes, I did get killed, at least once. But the game gave me a break when the zombies didn't even bother to look my way while I escaped from the pseudo giant. Once out of the tunnel, we broke for home to take care of my mac rubs. It was getting a little dirty with all the snork guts and junk. Now here's where things get a little interesting. The radar was next. But with our current getup, we were in no shape to be doing that. But I hatched a rather interesting plan that I'll explain in a moment. Right now, we got work from Dushman to deal with some randomly generated military folks who weren't here a second ago. You would have thought they'd have the advantage, given the superior armor and automatic weapons, but the zone works in mysterious ways. Just like when this merc stood right behind the soldier I was unloading on and caught a few of my Makarov rounds. They took my life for that. But the real prize was this rifle here. Not the rifle, more so with a massive scope on it. This scope that I believe comes from the Gauss rifle and says it has some target acquisition built into it. You would not believe that I sold this scope to Dushman for 69,000 rubles, and even better, Dushman was reselling it for over 379,000. You remember that plan I mentioned? Oh yeah, it's game time. I got NVGs, bullets, a steel plate, and a second artifact slot for my suit. Since we only have Makarov's distance is the big issue, so my big brain thought, why not attack the radar? at night. Not here to toot my own horn, but this plan worked out pretty damn well. The PB made it even better. I mean, low visibility and silenced weapons? Talk about wombo combo. I wasn't invincible though. I mean, that much is for sure. But give it enough time and enough quick saves and we can freaking do it. These guys though posed a bit of a problem. They were very well armored and right in my way, so I tried to do something up close, but my gun was more or less a mosquito bite to them. My big brain got us here, it can get us out. So I opted for a little shoot and scoot tactic, at least to lure them closer to me. Then we used this big old tree as cover, and this guy walked right up to me. How <laughs> convenient. Only a few dome shots to deal with him. From here, most of our problems would relate to the tower guards at the base being able to see me even while I was sneaking around which gave me away to the other guys. Also, burner anomalies. But that still couldn't stop me from turning out their lights. What we had to do was buckle in and deal with the ground troops first. Let them come to us and make some good shots. Then we could, uh, uh, goody, size storm. Don't let it distract you. These tower guards have to go if we want a chance of getting into the radar. Let's also hope there isn't too many troops running around the base. I don't know if we were lucky or just quick enough, but we got right up to the lab with little time to spare. From here, nothing too crazy until we turn off the Brain Scorcher. If you remember the last video, it was impossible for a group of 12 Freedom Soldiers, the top ranked stalker in the zone, and a couple of mercenaries and exoskeletons to defeat even the first third of this lab. Watch as Wavy with just a couple of Makarovs decimates the monolith by sitting on top of a large storage tank. Everything was going smooth, even when I left the top of the tank. That was until I went to go fix my suit, got a little cocky, and was annihilated by this guy with a KS-23. But you want to know what really did me in? It wasn't the nearly endless supply of monolith. It wasn't the dude with the 50 cal. It wasn't the guy who attacked me from behind. Hell, it wasn't even the dudes in the exoskeletons. Even those guys didn't scare me. Instead, it was a stairwell, and in this stairwell was a man with an exoskeleton and a PKM. If you don't understand, just know he's in some of the strongest armor in the game, wielding a machine gun, okay? What screwed us even more was his friendly who I smoked at the foot of the stairwell, so now we also had to deal with an obstacle on the stairs. It's been a while on Wavy's gaming adventure since we've had a proper one, but please enjoy a death montage. Тебя. 
Oh, what? You think I wouldn't turn on God Mode and stab him to death? You need to learn, children. But don't fret. We did it legit. Blasted him good and caught him reloading his gun. This took a good 10 minutes. All for one guy. Once I finished off the rest and cleared out the lab, I immediately jumped back home. We settled in and took a look at our next objective. Visiting Zaton up north, which meant a big old journey. Just like the pioneers. I got some extra money from cold for documents, geared up, and shipped off. In the red forest, I got blindsided from a snork who didn't make a single noise, and then hid behind this minecart for the next 15 minutes. No, it was actually 15 minutes. We used a few saves to do it, but there was just a lot of monolith here. Don't even remember how many. It, it was also hard to like see anything. I mean, it's a freaking forest. I also didn't realize this iron gate with obvious spaces to shoot through was basically bulletproof, so these standoffs got pretty fun. After capping the last one, I spent another five minutes searching through all the bodies and left for Jupiter. Jupiter was uneventful, and no, I did not make a stop for the heart of the oasis. Who needs artifacts when you have a few macrobs? And after a brisk run through Zaton, we made it to the Skadovsk and finally got a chance to talk to Beard. We also delivered a PDA to Nimble, one of the only missions we can get from our trader back at base, stupid spore. This left us with a conversation with Rogue, but first I had to go see this guy who had no texture on his outfit. Hmm, not sure that's supposed to be that way, but I like your spirit. Rogue told us about a gun we absolutely must have to defeat the monolithian known as Eidolon. So I went on a very pleasant hike out to the lavish area, ignored the poltergeist completely, took the gun, and hiked on back. Not before giving this box a piece of my mind. We returned to Rogue to give him the rifle, and then let him stew a little while we ran some errands. Now begins the final stretch of the game, and I'm still running around with a stupid stalker suit. You know what that means. That's right, more random missions. Wavy took some more rookies on another adventure. Hunted down a Psy Sucker. Got stuck in here because the debug mode fast traveled me to the bed, and we helped Dushman with another group of military guys that I technically spawned by accepting the mission in the first place. And after all that and more, we grabbed ourselves a nice CS4B armored suit. And we still have a little money left over. So begins our trek into Pripyat. We grabbed Rogue and made our way into the Jupiter Underground. Wavy didn't even use the fast travel for this, look at me! This is where we met a foe that I could not handle. No, it was not zombies, monolith, or any creature. It was these boxes. I don't know if I'm skeet or something, but these boxes couldn't be destroyed. Ugh. After getting bested by plywood, Rogue and I took some snorks out back, if you catch my drift. And in the last challenge, we learned that Rogue could single-handedly take care of all the monolith here in the underground. So we let him take the initiative. Like I said, he can deal with it. But thank goodness I can shoot things this time around, so the zombies here didn't immediately demolish Rogue. We got out of the underground, I wasn't fast enough in telling Rogue to leave everything alone, and I had to run all the way back to the underground entrance to help him with one Zomboni. See what I mean? I don't know how they get his ass so good all the time, but they do. Now we could talk to Straylock, stupid Rogue, and Stitch to get our next few missions. I was lucky enough to finish Stitch's mission right away, but our next one is going to be interesting. That is correct. Time to hunt a pseudo giant. How to do this with a Makarov, you ask? Well, basically we shoot it until it dies. I know, I know. Well, shit, Wavy, why didn't I think of that? But first, before we could really do much of anything, we have to get killed by a couple of snorks. Now here's a look at our ammo before we get to shooting the giant T-Rex mutant. We're gonna be using a good chunk of our special P ammo, which has higher damage than the FMJs, but will also employ very liberal use of our FMJs. Care for a little gambling, over, under, 130 rounds to kill the pseudo giant. And I'll be fully transparent here, script writing Wavy hasn't seen the final value yet, and I certainly don't remember it. But I'm taking the over on this one. And the result? It's 143. I screwed up on the original recording. The math is on the screen. Since we didn't use any AP ammo, we were in good shape to continue on towards the lab after dealing with the pseudo giant. Even armed with a macrov, these poor zombies didn't stand a chance. But as we know, these hot streaks are long-lived. 
Especially when the monolith are involved. Although you think we're just gonna take it, you're wrong. We're just warming up. The monolith posed no threat to a motivated wave with more than one Makarov. And with the generator on, time to venture into the lab. Now you might imagine that I would know where to look by now having completed this game a dozen times, but Wavy likes to keep himself on his toes every once in a while by being dumb or doing something stupid. I searched nearly everything, nearly, and killed all of the mutants in the entire lab. But here's where the documents actually were. Usually I'd search all over here, but I didn't take the time before to search in the flooded area. Certainly not one I'd expect to find them at. And with everything complete for these bozos, it was time once again to re-equip ourselves. Besides ammo, as per usual, I really wanted to upgrade the suit with these wound healing and health restoration mods. The healing we actually had the recipe to build the upgrade kit for, but it required materials we don't have, mainly transistors that come from electronics. After running around searching every stash and box I could find, we were reduced to buying the things we needed. I had to build not just one upgrade kit, but two, since the one I needed was the advanced version. Now it's unfortunate that I didn't film it, we were streaming and I forgot, but I searched the stash and stumbled across the upgrade kit for the healing part of the suit, and I got all the supplies to build the other upgrade. So here we go, boys and girls. Now we equip ourselves with a very, very powerful armored suit. We also got even more upgrades just to be safe. With my literal superhuman suit, it was time to take care of Eidolon and annihilate the monolith. To make this job a smidge easier, I dropped the Gauss rifle for one of my companions to use. First, we have to deal with a little monolith scout unit. Usually not too big a deal, a few dummies with rifles. Except it wasn't just dummies with rifles. Yep, that's right. One of them has an RPG. Honestly, a Gauss rifle may have been easier to deal with, but I, I digress. Wavy thought, since Makarov's in range don't play nice, let's get a little bit closer to the RPG guy. Hoping he wouldn't shoot me up close with an RPG. It's just too stinking bad he was also carrying a KS-23. So, he's got long range and short range covered. I had a brilliant idea to hide in this building. In the meantime, get some pot shots in while my friendlies get basically exterminated. Then we perform the most expected counter move in existence. Yes, the flanking maneuver. This worked out pretty well, not gonna lie. Even gave us a chance to take care of the RPG guy up close and with cover. Take that, nerd. Let's go, baby. Last guy gave us a big scare, though. KS-23 up close, and I didn't quick save for quite a while. Sheesh, really playing with fire, aren't you, Wavy? With the outskirts nice and clear, we quietly made our way to the Monolith headquarters. Shot a few guys out front, put the RPG to use for our purposes, and heart attack. Good looks, Stitch. Good looks. Out front was not much, so we snuck into the theater and got into some serious trouble. First round was an AEK that let me up good. Second round was an exoskeleton punk who punched my gun out of existence. I wasn't gonna let it slide, but he got the better of me. By the third round, they were on me as soon as I loaded the save, so no more sneaky sneaky. We finally got to meet Edelon, though, and we spent the next five minutes filling his face with lead. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to catch the amount of bullets we spent on him, because I was also busy covering our ass at the same time. But you can imagine from stuff like this, how it went. Even when he got down, I didn't let up for a second, but we did manage to kill the practically invincible Edelon. I also got my wish to fight a guy with a Gauss rifle. Told you it was easier than an RPG. And for some reason, I felt the need to rid the base of troops. So I went to attack the stragglers in the theater. See, this, this right here is why I choose to make companions not killable. Because they're dumber than a sack of potatoes. Just look at Rogue get absolutely smoldered right here. At least they're not invincible, because then he'd still be fighting back. After cleaning up this mess, we enjoyed a nice emission in the theater, jumped back home to get more bullets, and ran up onto the CMPP from Pripyat. Of course, couldn't have been a better greeting party than a controller and a chimera. Controller got killed first, which was good, leaving us with a chimera and a few lurkers. Sissy ass lurkers. We were just lucky the chimera was too focused on my boys, which gave me the room I needed to deal with it. Now last challenge, we had only companions as offense, so we used a cheap end around to beat the game. I could do the same if I wanted to, 
but I felt like that wouldn't be as fun as dumping the entire CMPP force down the drain with the cheapest pistol in the game. But a lot of this next part of the adventure is very drawn out. We spent about an hour accomplishing this, and I don't think I even died once. It just simply took time for us to deal with the enemies. They're all very, very well equipped, and I can't say the same for us. At least I have a good suit, which did take a clobbering the process. Thank goodness I brought plenty of repair equipment. But just remember, do not show the monolith weakness, because they will for certain come after you at the worst time possible, like when you're repairing your suit in the middle of the hallway. I will admit, not my best choice of coverings. It was fun though, with how aggressive we were getting out here, even the monolith were starting to hide from me in fear. Who needs a big iron when you have small Soviet steel? The Phantom Guards were a little less impressed with my Makarovs, but it didn't make them any less bulletproof. While we were off killing everything in this place, my friendlies were fighting a single monolith soldier that I had to run all the way back to the beginning to deal with, so they finally come join me for the last bit. At least they were a good distraction, but we still had to deal with everything. And after exterminating the monolith with Stalker's version of a pea shooter, we grabbed our artifact and talked to Straylock. All we had to do next was jump back home, talk to Cold. There it is, folks. We beat Stalker Anomaly with nothing but a couple of Makarovs. Hope you guys and gals enjoyed. I know I did. This took time, mostly. But it wasn't that difficult. Everything was pretty doable. I even think eh, it was a smidge easier than the Mosin challenge. At least this time around, I had a chance against Snorks. <laughs> Anyways, peace out, my friends. I will catch you all on the flip.